Hui has not really shown a it's massive been a counter pick. In Seoul, hasn't yeah, it, really? and that's lost two games. Even though I, I like the idea behind it, I think it's actually been a smart lane pick as well, and then into siege comps. But it's not really been powerful enough to give them wins on red side. Yeah, that's exactly right. But we are into champions, like ladies and gentlemen. Bands coming through thick and fast. The Soraka and Caitlyn are going to be removed from CLG. Definitely, I just love seeing these weird <laughs> bands. But it's just so understandable. The bottom line here out of CLG have been able to mix it up and do such good things. Pretty standard on the side of CLG as far as their bands are concerned. Nidalee and Zed are going to be taken away from Perks and Trick. Yeah, I assume D2 is looking for like a second rotation Lucian pick. They expect the standard top picks like a jungler and a top laner to go in the first rotation. Then they get a Lucian pick wow, and they Dasha. try and play like uh, these bully lanes. Poppy going to be banned away. Dasha on there towards the top side of the map. Maokai, of course, still left up. A zero big pick, Rise there at the same time. There are lots of champions available, of course. In CLG games, it does tend to happen with the necessity yeah. of the Soraka and the Caitlyn, but Bard is up as well. There's a lot of picks. There's a lot of good picks here, and it's fun to see. We have one top lane ban, we have one jungle ban as well. So you still have like Graves, Kindred, you still have Maokai, yep. and Echo in there, so you can trade almost everything. Maokai is still like a fantastic pick. Trundle, I actually like as well that ban, but you also when it's T2, you gotta always consider Braum. Because they really yeah. want to play Braum for hybrid. We know Aphromoo can play it as well, but Kindred is the standard one. CLG can say, fine, we'll take a Graves. That's going to be our pick into it. We don't need to pick it now. So they could actually go, if they want to steal away a support, they could go like Braum and then for their preferred top lane choice in either Maokai or Echo. Well, Darshan actually looking at the Maokai for now. That's another one. Yeah, putting a lot of emphasis on the Lucian and they look make up their minds immediately here. So locked in the tree and the Gunslinger himself. Now G2 with their picks. Echo makes a lot of sense. Of course, of we've course. got three top laners here at this tournament at the moment. Not a Teemo, but uh, <laughs> I really like the Lucian choice as well because it's clear that G2 were aiming to get Lucian in that second rotation. Yep. We're banning Caitlyn away and trying to have a stronger 2v2. Also, Lucian as a pick in lane does more than fine versus a Braum. It's very easy to dodge out of his Q and therefore he never really gets to play that aggressive against the Lucian specifically. So I think that's a very, very smart first pick. And also, you give it over to Stixer, you know, let him be that carry in the team fights. Well, it is going to be the Bard locked in here for G2. This Perks is having a little bit of fun. Timo Hopper getting the crowd a little bit excited here as CLG. Now with their second last couple of picks. And that's the thing for G2 right now. I mean, you don't really play for anything other yeah, than that beating Perks NA. Perks is having a laugh on the, on the desk right now. It's feeling exactly. good. Exactly. And, and beating just to, playing just to beat NA is also important for like a yeah. European team. So G2 definitely will look to probably play very aggressive. We'll try and look to see if they can get an early advantage and take down CLG and try and annoy them and force them into a potential three-way tiebreaker. Well, look, Dashan said it right. You know, this is a team that has been overly aggressive. But if you manage to make things work with that over-aggression, you can snowball things out of control. Or if you don't, you just lose almost every game. Yep. And no, look, and uh, look, that has been sort of what has been happening here is Braum, Braum and Graves are going to be locked away here from CLG. Denial. But, of course, the Bard was already there and the Graves makes a lot of sense. The third rung of the jungle slot. Yeah, I really feel like CLG are very, very happy to see some of these early picks from, uh, from G2 because, again, you trade jungle. Sure, a lot of people would value Whoa. the Kindred above it, but also, like, you now get Braum to stop the Bard queue, which is great. And you also get a support who can really punish if people overextend. You know, tag one guy, Focus him out when he steps too far, kill him instantly. It's actually been one of the big, big issues for G2 playing against things like Braum. Yeah. Where they just step too far and one guy gets CC'd and he goes down. And a team with CLG's communication is just fantastic with the Braum. It's just if you have that target prioritization, Aphromoo can just say, I've tagged this guy, let's stun him and kill him, move on to the next one. But the lock ins here for G2, that is the full lineup there, as it is Callista and the LeBlanc that have been taken away. Blind pick LeBlanc mm -hmm. is ballsy. See what who he is going to take into it. Aurelian Soul is being hovered for now, and we'll see what Aphromoo decides for his mid laner. Yeah, he's picked that against Azir and Zillion. So not the big not assassins. Not assassins, right? Yeah. Oh. Azir could also be a choice. Rise is another good one. Definitely like Rise against LeBlanc because it's very, very easy for you to lock her down when she goes aggressive. With Rune Prison, you can run teleport as well. So if you do struggle in the laning phase, you can just use TP back to lane early on. Otherwise, CLG are drafting like. Yeah. In my opinion, the perfect comp against G2 at the moment. Because all of this has like single target CC, 
double teleport to react to the very aggressive play she two will pull off and mess up. Yeah. <laughs> and you have pull off or mess up. Which one, Deficio? Well, they will pull them off and they also well, okay, they will start them and then they will mess them up yeah. most likely. And then you can just react with double TP, lock down a single target. You have great AOE damage and great late game scaling as well. So even if you do have a few issues early on, yeah, you're going to be great later on. Looking at that fantastic stage as the champ champions are switched around effectively. It's looking terrifying on the side of CLG, a team that not only strategically has looked fantastic on the rift as well. That comeback victory, coaches are going to shake hands. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we do want to hear from you. Make sure you tweet at LOL Esports and let us know with CLG win or G2 win, who is going to be able to take this one because this is the last chance for Europe, the last chance for yes. G2 to really make their mark at this tournament. And against CLG, there's no team they'd rather beat. Definitely not. And CLG need to win this game here to guarantee that second place, avoiding RNG and facing Flash Wolves instead. Exactly right, but we are going to load up onto the Rift CLG. On the red side this time around, you did mention that maybe not with as many red side options. The counter pick was, of course, almost unnecessary because the rise yeah. so coveted at the moment. So in a game like this, it wasn't a problem because we had no mid lane bans and rise was there. Azir was another option. And Perks also, of course, had to blind pick his mid laner. So now it was perfectly fine for Hui. He gets a good matchup in the mid lane. And we talked about again, you know, Braum against a Bard. Braum can stop. Some of the bar Q's coming in. Obviously, bot will have much lower cooldown, so it's about baiting out that shield. Yep. Once the shield is down, you can then try and set up a play. And G2, man, I mean, they want to just get these standard lanes, play as aggressive as possible in these 2v2s. Might even see early ganks from Trick. Get perks rolling, get Emperor rolling, and then see if you can close out the game. Yeah, well, at the moment, G2 setting up defensively. Kikis is going to move down the jungle. He's tricking a prop. Proc the sapling. Oh, they're gonna annoy the saplings. Uh -huh. Kegis just checking the bush here when they walk in. Lashon is gonna try and zone them off though, protect his little babies back there. <laughs> Storm Raider Surge is actually the one picked up here by Who here. Mm. Strength of the Ages is the only other option here for Rise. Otherwise, pretty standard across the board. No Strength of the Ages to be picked up from Trick. So he's gonna opt for a little bit more aggression. Yeah, surprise, very, surprise. <laughs> very, very normal. Fervor of Battle definitely the best on Kindred as well, and we get the 2v2 lanes. So CLG are confident enough they can play this 2v2 lane against G2. And if there's ever a lane that, you know, you're comfortable going 2v2 against the Bard with, it is going to be that Braum. Braum Lucian has been known to be fantastic and get those yep. stuns very quickly. We'll see whether they are going to be able to make it work here as they take down the Grom first up. And of course, we saw who he grab uh, the Raptors there, the small ones, meaning he just needs to kill one of the range minions, plus his three melees, and he actually levels up to level two. So he's going to get it very, very soon. Perks opting to trade just before he gets it. So the timing is there, he understands. Okay, I can jump in right after. Just wait for that one minute to die. Now all in in bot lane. Yeah, there it is. The exhaust goes down. Hybrid He's going to be able to make it to relative safety. Of course, skill shots were missed on both sides. But Aphromoo just showing that, yeah, they came to play. Yeah, but if Aphromoo had hit that skill shot first, they might have been able to land a stun on Hybrid. Get him even lower. They did get the flash. Got the flash though, so they can be happy with the trade. Used exhaust only on the side of Aphromoo, but good start. And again, we talk about CLG knowing this lane, Lucian Brom, they are confident they can play it into a Bard Kalista. And that's why I really like the takeaways, especially the Lucian in that first rotation, because I think Emperor needs that champion to carry. Yeah, I also really like it with the fact that they have the extra push power with that piercing light being taken first. So CLG just utilizing their slight advantage in the 2v2. Smithy is going to be taking his blue buff here after that red went down earlier on. We'll see whether he makes any aggressive movements. You can see that is going to be the kindred mark of wolves towards the top side of the map on that Rift Scuttler. We'll see whether Trick is going to be able to get over there and grab it, or the CLG going to play the denial game. Everything else very, very standard. Obviously, mana crystal start for Huhi, so you can go back early, get a tier, start stacking it, get the scaling rolling, even though Rai sitting on a tier and a catalyst is actually enough to Almost one we want anything. Yep. The fantastic thing about Rise, like you think, oh yeah, just you just want to scale right now for about what 20 minutes. Like, nope, I can actually kill you already. Just sitting on mana items. So who he is gonna be just fine in the mid lane. It's Smithy down bottom side. Because no flash from hybrid, remember. Oh well, you can see Pierce actually flies through. Aphromo taken below half. Why is hybrid stepping oh, that far forward my though? My goodness, end of the line comes down, but doesn't find too much damage on Amber here. Magical journey from hybrid. Interestingly placed, but unnecessary there. Such a risky play, though. You have no flash. 
There's actually nothing you can do. You step forward anyway, and you just queue straight into a minion wave. Yeah. That was like a chance, you know, you can pull off a gank there from McSmithy, but obviously CLG valued getting that farm first and couldn't just rush forward would have given the gank away much earlier. So nothing happening right now. Other than that jungler showing, meaning Trick can actually invade, find that single Raptor that was left. Yep, pretty cute there, leaving a ward in there so that the Raptor's sense is not going to be all that useful clearing out the jungle. Not, not that there are any wards, but if there were, it'd be pretty useful. Kick us now. Pushing Darshan around a little bit, but the Christmas tree more than happy just to sit back, pick up whatever minions he can, go about his day. And we are expecting Maokai to fall slightly behind. Not yep. anything massive, really, for himself. He can clear out the wave fairly easily and avoid like a big push in and getting tower dove. Obviously, once Kinder hit level 6, we can start looking for them when you need. You need more time. When you gank a Maokai, you dive a Maokai, it's not like just two hits and he's dead. You need that Kindred ulti in there to buy a bit more time for yourself before you can jump out of tower. But again, Maokai can wave clear fairly easily, keep the wave in control around the mid side or around the middle lane. Middle of the lane, because it's not yep. the middle lane. <laughs> well, this is the middle lane. This is the middle lane, yeah. Oh. Who's, who he is actually standing back here, understands. Spidey senses were tingling as Trick heads in, looking for potentially something. Just stay back there, Huhi. No need to go too far up. This is a great thing about Huhi. He understands his role yeah. so, so well. There's, after, there's no reason for him to try and be like aggressive with early trading against perks here. He's running teleport against an offensive summoner, against a champion who can lock him down very, very easily, and then he can get ganked. And that's the way for Tiju to kind of snowball this game and win this game. So instead he's saying, you know what, I'm perfectly fine waiting back here. I don't need to overextend for CS. I'm going to be ahead in farm once this wave even hits the tower. So yeah. he's so not he playing scaling, over aggressive. Man. And he also knows his role in team fights. Often it's about Stixie being the main damage dealer and Hui trying to like pull attention. Good little oh trade my here by god, yeah, speaking of which, Hui okay. just going to get destroyed. Perks with the 1v1 lands everything he needs to. I don't think he realized Perks just hit level 6 when he went in there for that quick trade. Yep, Caster Curse really coming out trumps that. Happened last game as well. Yeah. But like technically he's doing his job right, he's staying at tower, he's waiting for the minions. Perks hit level 6 way before this though, so he couldn't be surprised. Just get hit by everything and taken down. That's called an unloading, but who he just could not stand up to. Catalyst not able to be purchased as he goes back to base, but a little bit of extra health with the Ruby Crystal will hopefully help <laughs> him not get obliterated. But that's only double Dorans from Perks. I'm sorry, CLG. <laughs> Talking about, you know, yeah, great job. So you've been too it. much to fish here. We know how you feel about this. Well, Emperor actually might be in trouble here. Whoa. One more auto attack gets the stun. Unbreakable's down there from Aphromo as Stixe has the ignite on him. You see Trick is already down here. Nice cosmic binding from Hybrid. G2 playing the lane okay. CLG still up and aggressive. Point still stands. Mm-hmm. Couldn't predict that uh, Perks was able to hit everything and just take out Hui in one combo right there. Yeah, Apart well, from that, you know. Uh, otherwise, getting everything correct, I understand. Yeah, yeah, you know, understanding his role and yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was underneath his turret. Like, he couldn't have got any closer to his turret for safety than that. Perks just ignored it. And so he now relegating himself to clearing out some puppies, thinking that the PvE life might be where he belongs. Not having to deal with this very scary witch lady in the mid lane. Yeah, it was now a level above him as well. And as you said before, couldn't even get the full catalyst on his first oh, pack. Did you saying we're gonna bring more? Yeah, magical journey is gonna be delivered. Fate's call comes down. Who are you gonna get knocked into the air? In goes Perks as well. There's the chains okay. that land. Emperor is gonna lock down the kill with the rend. Smithy over here. There's the flash out from Dashan as they're looking for hybrid. He's got no mana and just gonna get destroyed. Now Emperor forced to use the flash, but Aphromu just gonna get the point blank winter's bite. Says, yeah, that's all I need. Understanding picks it up. his role right <laughs> there. His role as a target? I'm gonna make sure they're gonna three-man gank me, die between two towers, and then my team is gonna TP in behind them and get two kills. Or maybe they're gonna get another kill. No, because now Trick is uh, going very aggressive and Hui is joining in with teleport. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you see, you see? It's the bait. I'm like, Once ah, again, guys, you're a genius to fish you. I'm falling behind. Oh, <laughs> you could maybe dive me here. And then they did. And yeah. instant reaction by CLG. He's doing a bear impression, by the way, guys. But let's have a look at this one again. All right, so. First of all, he actually should flash here. This is a very easy flash by Hui to avoid dying, and he still gets the bait, so it would have been the same situation. 
Because now CLG joins in. Obviously, Hybrid has been tanking the tower. Dashawn with a good flash here. And then it's two very easy kills. You can see Aphromo on your minimap coming up as well. So we just wanted to see a flash there from Hui out of the Fate's Call. And then everything else would have worked out just fine for CLG. Also got the bot lane tower because of the roam by G2. And very clear the game plan is, oh, we got a lead in one lane. Okay, let's try and get even further ahead in that lane. If maybe we can get perks to be like a 3-0, he can yeah. start moving around the map and snowballing everything else. I don't think investing your AD carry support in the laning phase very early on in the game to dive between two towers is the safest play. But uh, it's not been the G2 style here at MSI. Yeah, exactly. It's not about safety. It's about just going super ham. And if it works, it works. And it has been this game. G2 actually finding a little bit more success than they otherwise would be. There were some unfortunate plays in their first game of the day that just didn't quite go their way. This time, though, they killed the rise. That's all we really need to think about. And it's not often we see a player being 0-2 and still having flash ready. But that's, again, another bait. Because now G2's saying, ah, ah. <laughs> he probably did use flash, right? Yeah, let's try and gank him again. And then he's going to flash away. Oh, he's going to flash onto perks, room prison him. Nick Smithy's going to be there with all the Graves burst damage. Yeah, he's still leveled down and uh, Perks has completed first item, which is a massive power spike. So he's still happy. Also managed to run away from the fight. Mm -hmm. Everything else is uh, not standard at all because we have just had a tower dive between two towers. Between or from a bot lane and also lost bot tower from it. So it's not standard, but uh, it's something. Certainly is. Junglers, though, very even right now as Trick tries to take down the pink water. Only a couple of auto attacks. We'll be able to get it. They're extraordinarily even. One extra CS here for the Kindred after that ward goes down. But as far as leads are concerned, it's Stick, say, with the lead towards the bottom side. Something that we probably could have predicted based on how well he's been playing. But also, yeah, the focus here is Stick, say, just uses the Relentless Pursuit. That's going to get him to safety. Not quite able to find the wall. It's hybrid. He just dies. Tempered fate a little bit late. Hybrid going to bite the dust. CLG, they were getting collapsed on, but yeah. Yeah. I like how Aphromo was like, I actually don't even need to help you. Yeah. I'm just going like to run you on the side, take a few pictures, you know, grab a selfie, and then Hybrid goes down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Well, Emperor now trying to do what he can. There's the flash into the Glacial Fissure. A casual movement to the side is going to get Emperor to relative safety, but he just gets destroyed. That's all they needed. Kick is going to make his way in, but the exhaust still there for Aphromoo, and Stixay is just having a field day. <laughs> Thank you very much, says Aphromoo. I'll pick up the kill. Still the assist for the Lucian. He's feeling all right. I, yeah, so Kick is thought actually he could stay alive for longer because Trick was running down. That's why he completed the teleport instead of just cancelling it. But he's building MR, and he joined in to the lane with the AD carry, so he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that, right. that's Magical Journey it. comes in here. Hybrid is going to get stunned up eventually. Stixay dealing with Trick right now. He's going to get stunned, but so Stixay and destroyed. Aphromu not going to be able to quite find too much. Winter's Bite does a heck of a lot of damage. Trick did have the ultimate if he needed it. Not going to be. G2 grab a couple of kills. Right, CLG tried to push out the lane and then started recalling. Getting caught out in the middle of the lane. So Aphromo at first. Forcing the Duke to the side and then landing the first hit. And now Kikis is like, guys, I'm buying time. Look here on your minimap. Kikis is running, sorry, Trick is running down. But again, it's uh, it's an MR Sheen Echo. Got stunned and died. Yeah. And then CLG started recalling and G2 came in. Got two more kills and we are now nine kills at 12 minutes. Small lead for CLG. I like it though. Bloodthirsty game, G2. I mean, yeah, you're getting what you want. Yeah, damn right. He's maybe going to start off the dragon here on his own. Does have some backup coming in in the form of Sticks and Huhi. Now going to be able to grab this one relatively easily. Dragon number one. The trick would probably like. Does have that Devourer. Going to set on those five stacks. The CLG locked that one down. So 6% stats. Feeling good. Yeah, Trick is a jungler who prefers farming champions. Yep. Uh, that's the way he wants to do it. And instead of going for these. Boring dragons, like, who cares? Yeah. It's barely doing anything to you. Instead, you collect trophies. It has to be skulls of CLG. <laughs> the Rengar player in him coming out. CLG are going to be able to get a little bit of damage down onto that mid turret, but otherwise not too much. Quite short range is this squad. See whether they can get to the point where Darshan is so big, they can just ignore those turrets, tank them up, take things through. But is something that G2 could possibly play towards, even though their comp is not all that long range itself. Yeah, this is what we like, though. Uh, when you're against the LeBlanc lane, you just group 
on the lane because she can't really wave clear then, especially when there's a Braum standing right next to her. In case she did jump in earlier, she could just been tagged and stunned. Kikis now might be in trouble. Actually, no, Smithy is uh, well, he's in trouble. Oh, his tower's in but, trouble uh, anyway, but. Good little wave clear. Things up. Yeah. It's a very underrated thing about Echo Top. Again, you have a, you have really good early wave clear, which makes it a lot harder for teams to set up these dives when they gather the big minion wave and move yeah. in towards you. Xmithy trying to get a ward, but he's actually going to get collapsed on. Yeah, going to get pincered. Hybrid's coming in as well as the time winder is going to get relatively dodged. Uses the ultimate to get himself out of the way, but parallel convergence. Will he find the stun? See, Trick one. is going to grab it. Trick farming champions. Yeah, that's my boy. Starting right there, Xmithy moving in when he actually had no control in River to place a ward. And it's so annoying for a journey because you just want to get that little ward over the wall so you can see the blue buff and the grump and you actually get good deep vision. And then you just want to, want to run away. Like, you never actually want to stay. Well, there's the ward. So the ward is there. Get one thing. Yeah, yeah, he got the ward in. Oh, Perk's gonna get slowed down by the Winter's Bite here as Stixe trying to get damage onto this turret. The ultimate goes off. Perk's actually gonna get locked down and he's not gonna be able to distort the... He is gonna be able to distort the minions away because the man has balls of steel. Now gonna be able to clear out the minion wave. But CLG flexing some muscles in the mid lane. Yeah, it's just tough though. CLG, we're just missing one more member there to actually kill Perks and that was gonna be the rise if you looked at the push from before when we talked about it. Still get a lot of damage on it to have pressure in multiple lanes. Giving up one kill here didn't really stop CLG from keep pushing. Also because G2 invested so much getting that one kill on Xmithy. In the end though, we have a top lane tower getting taken down. We have a mid lane tower that's very low and it's just a matter of time before CLG can take down both of them and get a quite a big gold lead. Well, we'll see whether they can. As the Road of Ages has now been completed by Huhi. Do have, of course, Merlin Omicron coming up here for Perks, but Abyss Scepter is there already. A little bit of defensive flavor, but I like it. Who he's getting to the point where he's quite difficult to deal with. Just has that Seraph's Embrace to finish off for now. We'll see whether he goes for something like an Abyssal Scepter to stop Perks' damage and also buff his own. Darshan, of course, does do a little bit of magic damage. Makes a bit of sense. Of course. And we got our track trick and his uh, Devour here. Needs 28 more kills to get it fully stacked. <laughs> Feels like a lot. It's called late game scaling. Yeah, good. We scaling, boys. We, we scaling. Do. We I do. I like it. Hybrid. Because he's, he's obviously not farming anything else. So 28 more champions to come in. We'll see if it happens. Yeah, well, CLG just going to brute force the mid lane. I able to pick that one up with the mini wave. A little bit of mispositioning there as Perks was answering the split push of Huhi in the bottom side. 30 CS in the lead, though, and a kill and assist ahead. Perks, he's the one oh, that's able to make things him. work as Huhi. He's having a look at the shop, but he's got a fair bit of health, so he's going to be fine. Emperor. I feel gonna like say narrowly avoided, but he just used the move continuously in one direction strategy to yeah. stop that one. Afro got baited from before. Oh, TP top lane. They're actually coming two man, collapsing on Kikis here. That yeah, is the rise. Actually blows the ultimate there as well to try and catch up to Kikis, who's just gonna turn around. Understands there's a lot of people. Parallel convergence. Not gonna find the stun just yet. As there's the calling out. Rip oh, Barrel gonna help out. He's alive. CLG with a sixth man. Kickers no, is still he's not running. alive. Yeah, no, definitely not. End of the line is indeed the end of the line. Is it Smithy going to lock down that kill? But G2, yeah. they still are able to get something from it. That was a good play by Kickers, buying so much time. CLG had to send up four guys to try and take him down, and then they lose bot tower for it. No dragon, though, to be picked up. Instead, CLG straight back to the mid lane again. They got these early towers now. Are ahead in gold, pushing down even further. No minion wave though, so not going to be able to get any damage onto this inner turret. Tempered Fate was of course there if, Afro, if uh, sorry, Hybrid wanted to defend or anything like that. CLG There's a ward behind. Out. CLG up in this tri-bush here. Kick has had a ward Ooh, place. they're pinging it as well. Yeah, do they want to try and set up a kill? Instantly. Four as kills? soon as he gets back up, Kick is teleporting in their trick. Now as well does have the ultimate available, but there's a big ult from Afro Mu. The Glacial Fissure locking people down. There's the exhaust, but it's not enough to stop Emperor from picking up the kill. Blade of the Rune King comes down. This is massive for G2 as the heal comes out. But Darshan is huge. What a monstrous tree in this front line. And he's just walking around, smashing people down. In goes Perks. He's able to lock down one under Sticks, eh? But is the tree going to be able to find him? There it is. Punched in the head with a big old tree root. G2 went a little bit too early here. The TP plan was actually smart, but Kings was so far away from the team and also the ulti missed from Hybrid to start the fight and also really buy a bit more time. You know, okay, Kings, you have two more seconds now to come here. Set up this perfect fight. 
And instead, CLG are able to turn around. Look here, TP is going to come so far behind. This ult is supposed to hit from hybrid to buy more time as well for Kikis to join. Now they're actually fighting without a front line on the side of G2. And Stixa is getting free hits off hybrid. Or Hui, understanding his role. Yeah. Oh, hey, guys, hit me. Hit me. Engaged. Ignore Stixa. He's just standing right next to him, hitting everyone. Will go down in the end due to perks getting that last kill. But CLG wins the fight. It was a good setup, honestly, by G2, but executed very poorly. Yeah. Darshan just wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. He smacks them all in the face. The tree really doing some work now. 3 0 3. Has the Sunfire Cape, has the Spear of Visage. He's going to be a problem moving forward because we saw Kickers just melted. He's got that early sheen that he picked up, doesn't have the Sunfire Cape, only has the Spectre's Cow. He's got the poor man's version. Yeah, he's got to buy everything. Yeah. With the two items that Darshan has finished. I want some spirit visages, I want a sunfire, give me an ice bomb yeah, gauntlet. Look at all the things I want. Sadly, you need gold to get them. You're yeah. zero three. And look, look who's in control of Christmas at the moment, Darshan. He ain't giving the gifts out to kick us this year. Could just give him one. Yeah, you I know. know. Just be a nice guy, you know, give him one. You gotta give him a cute little knife and a ring. <sighs> Other than that, I mean that's all like Darshan kept the rest for himself. He's making it work for him as well. 3,000 gold to lead here for CLG with a couple of hundred added on top. Oh, kick is the flank again. We've seen this a few times. Didn't really work, but they Got might it. be trying again. Yeah, who he as well. Deep in enemy territory right now as he's looking to try and help take down this blue buff. Perks is going to be able to lock it in, but CLG so aggressively positioned. The tree is over the wall, through the wall, might I add. Cosmic Binding is going to go wide. Trying to grab the inside track here on the mid lane, but Minion Wave is not quite in the right place. We have to remember, G2, they can technically set up a fancy little play. Imagine like hybrids ulti, Ooh, and, then you, and, and then you put Kiki's W on top of it. Mm -hmm. So once they pop out, he jumps in, he stuns multiple members. Perfectly timed. It yep. will look fantastic. Into the double distortion out of perks. As there Get is some a lot. It. There it is! No! Oh, slightly oh. mistimed. There's the theory, but unfortunately it didn't quite work. But who he going down very low? Darshan, massive! As there's the ultimate out of trick, but saving the members of CLG a lot. Kick us in there, double kills, massive out of the tree, and G2 are melting. So close. Darshan hasn't taken damage. We almost and saw the combo. Baron. We and did. CLG also destroyed G2 in another fight here. Perks is still full HP, has ulti and everything. He's the hero we need. Is this the play? European mid laners have a habit of randomly stealing barons. Well, the teleport is coming down here from CLG. So he's going to make his way back in. Chains are going to land. He's just going to distract. He says, you're welcome to kill me, Perks. We want a baron buff and we want it now. You get it, Atlas. You get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to understand. CLG, though. Takes the Baron, takes another team fight. So, technically Hybrid is supposed to ulti first. They now do it at the same time, which is why obviously this doesn't work. And Gigi at this point, it's very hard for him to win the fight. Perk's not able to get the first distortion hit either. CLG has a Kindred ulti as well. They don't actually, it's both teams having a Kindred ulti, but in the end, no one can kill the Maokai, first of all. Kalista is behind, she can't kill tanks like at all. At this point, she needs so much time. Perks is not really able to get into the backline either because every time he gets close, well, there's enough CC to just lock him down. It can be a rise, rune prison, can be just attack from the Braum and then a few hits from Stixe. I feel like Darshan's been using cheat codes, man. It's like he's got the immortality buff on himself because that last team fight, I mean, he's supposed to be a tank. He was killing everyone. 5-0-4 now. This guy's a monster. They're knocking on the front door here with this Baron buff and they're not stopping. That turret's going to fall down. It's Smithy just deletes Kickers. Tank? Nah. -uh. There's the... Inhibitor I mean, is going to fall down as well. Kiki still didn't complete a full item yet. He got a... Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's still sitting. It's going to be just like okay to so many it. different things. That Dashaun is just in the front line. Almost immune to damage. Almost down to about half health. But what was that? The ultimate didn't even have a chance to be used there out of trick. This is going to be CLG finishing the game. The last Nexus turret is going to fall. Perks is down so low. CLG just turning it on against the Europeans. And that is going to lock up the second place for North America. Another great game by CLG and they're showing that right now they deserve that second place Damn right. in the standings. Fantastic group stage from them. Came in saying, you know, we're going to prove that we actually are a very, very good team. 
They certainly have done that. And it's not just the bottom lane this time. I'm really glad that you taught me about Huhi there in the mid lane, doing exactly what his job was. And that was Darshan stepping it up. That Maokai play was brilliant. Not necessarily the champions that he's known for, sort of has been that carry in the past, but he was just a rock. Well, a tree. A tree. Very large lump of timber cosplaying, on the you know, top side of the map. A rock yeah. cosplaying as a tree. Yeah. But we again, we see such a big difference because CLG seem in full control whenever it comes to like setting up these teleports and whenever T2 is trying anything aggressive, there's no one panics at all on the side of no. CLG. They know exactly what to do. Like that engage near the blue buff where we had the kick is TP way behind. Suddenly things are, a few things are missing from G2. Now I'm missing the Bard ulti as an example. Instant turnaround by CLG, taking the fight, winning the fight. They are playing extremely well, both if you look at the macro part, but also if you look at, of course, the team fighting, individual performances yep. from some of these players. Now, Dashon came into this tournament not being the greatest tank player, yeah. but he's just been getting better and better and better every single day. Yeah, and he's been playing the, the you know, the favorite three champions there towards yes, the top side of the exactly. map, and he most certainly has made it his own style. That Maokai was just so frightening, though. 5 0 5 at the end of the game. And he was playing it like it was a carry, honestly. He was using his Ventral Maelstrom to finish people off. I mean, that's the beauty, right? When you start getting ahead and the other team is playing a composition that needs to snowball from the early yeah. game. Had a good start with the first bot from Perks, but then decided to say, let's invest everything. You know, the Vroom up from Hybrid and Emperor, which obviously backfired completely, diving between two towers. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff we've seen from G2 that obviously tells us again, these guys right now are not a team. Like It's like five individual yeah. players on the map, everyone is trying to be the carry because they know they can't win through teamwork or communication. So it's definitely not the same team, but we've said that for four days now, five days. They didn't show up. Massive disappointment, honestly, overall for Europe as a region. It has been. And now they can go back and focus on the summer split of the EU LCS. Yeah, they're certainly going to have to. And I mean, there have been some sort of shining lights here. Of course, Perks managing to get that solo kill right underneath the enemy turret there in the very early sure. game on the side of his LeBlanc, really doing well, showing exactly why he was so coveted in Europe. But unfortunately, it's teamwork that's really been winning games here at MSI. Yeah. They just don't necessarily have what is needed in order to take down these other teams. Exactly, and when you don't have that and, and problems, your top level starts going down a little bit, like you don't play at 100%, maybe you play on a 90 or 80%, and yeah. suddenly, it's not enough, you know, for these players to show what they really could do, and that's just the story for G2. CLG, that's the team we want to talk about instead, because they're now yep. in the semi-final. They have locked second place. Flash Wolves cannot catch them. SKT cannot catch them, which means they will face Flash Wolves tomorrow, tomorrow on Friday or Saturday instead. He just wants more league. You know, we're just going to play them tomorrow, whatever. <laughs> Saturday or, of course, on yep. Friday, we have the semi-finals. That's going to be where CLG will take on Flash Wolves. SKT will t then take on RNG. Yeah, and we'll see exactly how that one's going to work out. Sort of bit of a I really messed a that preview up. Preview is going that to be that was actually next. impressive. <laughs> I actually really liked it. You know, it's, we got to make sure that the point was hammered home, which is I think something that we're going to need here, Deficio, sure. because it's going to be really exciting. I'm actually very happy to see the fact that CLG was able to take down the Flash Wolves this time around, and yeah. this is a team that was looking very scary in this controlled pace, but CLG able to step things up. We noticed this time G2, they tried to accelerate this game. CLG just said, all right, well, we'll just Easy go punish, on this yeah. wild ride with you, Easy and we'll see how to take you down. CLG right now is...